in 2024, the snow blower is gonna be our new leaf blower. The second, I'm not kidding, the second I turn the camera on, snow blower starts. So here we are an hour later, but it's fine because there's snow. It's worth it. I do this video every year, so I'll leave my past ones down below, but these are my top beauty products of 2023. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. Snow blower's back, baby. Okay, two hours later, and we are back in business, folks. Yearly favorites, here we are. Everything is gonna be linked down below in the description box. Can't tell if this top is giving New Year's vibes or figure skater. Feeling a little Michelle Kwan. Similarly to last year, because I've been traveling, I don't have all of the products here currently. Anything I'm mentioning is thoroughly tested and has been a favorite throughout the year. I swap out my makeup. Before we get into the beauty favorites, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Thrive Market. They've been a partner for years now and I've purchased the membership myself for years now. If you've never heard of Thrive Market, they're an online membership based market. I turn people onto Thrive Market in real life. I'm selling it to people in real life because I just think it's, it's so great. There's just killer prices on everyday items. There's lifestyle, home, food. I primarily use Thrive Market for food, snacks, beverages, like that kind of thing. Personally, I despise going to the grocery store. So if I can get stuff on sale and get it delivered right to my door, sign me up. There's also a lot of healthy options on there. So if you are trying to kickstart your 2024 being healthy goals, healthy lifestyle, there's a ton of different options on there. And you can also sort by diet and lifestyle very easily. So if you are keto, gluten-free, if you have any dietary needs, you can really easily sort through products that way. Right now you can get 30% off your first order plus a free gift valued at up to $60 with my link down below, which is thrivemarket.com slash taylorwin. They do good free gifts, by the way. So actually check that out. As far as membership, you can do month to month, which is $12 a month, or if you just choose to be billed annually, which is what I do, it breaks down to $5 a month. Make sure you're checking the deals and sales section because there's some incredible prices on there. I got the truffles 55% off, so eight bucks. And I actually keep those to give as like gifts for people. Organic raw honey is expensive and the best price I've seen is on Thrive. I got it for $13. The Rail Organic Pads, I have repurchased a few times. I really like them. They were on sale. I got the Wisps 47% off for $2.65. That's such a good price on those. I actually should have bought more bags of those. And the Stasher bag I got on sale. I saved $53.67 on this order. That was a good one. I really did good on the sales here. So the 30% off link will be down below. It's thrivemarket.com slash taylorwin for 30% off your first order and you get a free gift that's worth up to $60. Everything I talk about today will be listed down below in the description box and I'm not going in any particular order. I say no particular order, but this is probably in my like top three finds of the year, the Amicole loose powder. I am not a loose powder person. I try a bunch of them, but most of them just take away the coverage, don't do that much blurring, just make my skin look worse, honestly. This is one of the few powders along with the Urban Decay powder, which is also a favorite but that one has not restocked like the majority of the year. So if you can find that one, absolutely love it. I like to put it around my pores and on my chin and this noticeably blurs out the pores, especially when you use it with like a powder puff. That's my favorite way to apply it. I don't like using any kind of loose powders underneath my eyes. So this one I don't use under my eyes. You could if you like it under your eyes, but really I use this more as like a blurring powder. Last year, I feel like was kind of the year of lip products. This year I feel like was my year of cream blushes. I have a lot of cream blushes to mention here. Two that I feel like I reach for most often and that I just love the longevity of these and the look of them. I'm wearing the NYX Sweet Cheeks right now. This one is in the shade Coralicious. I tried a few other shades. Coralicious is by far my favorite. I don't know, the lighting right now is like a little darkish now, so hopefully you can see my makeup but i feel like it's a really pretty tone i like that it's matte this is just like doe foot applicator matte liquid blush it's pigmented so you don't need a ton it stays on my face well and i really like using a matte blush like this when i have you know maybe i have like a shimmery eyeshadow and glossy lip just to kind of like balance it out dirty probably should clean this off this is the charlotte tilbury pillow talk matte blush wand in the shade dream pop dream pop i thought was going to be just way too dark for my skin tone looking at it i tried all the shades this is the one that i absolutely love it gives you the prettiest 
wintery, like you look like you're freezing out in the snow kind of look. The applicator is kind of annoying. You just have to make sure you twist it off or else you'll have a little bit of a blush explosion happening in your bag. But besides the shade, I just love the formula of this one. It gives this like diffused kind of matte soft cheek. They're very similar and I actually had been waiting to mention these in like a dupes video. I think they're super similar. This one I think looks slightly more diffused. Both of them last really well though, love them both. This lip liner was a find closer to the end of the year. Like I wanna say I've been using this for a couple months now. The NYX retractable lip liner in the shade Sand Beige. I like that this one doesn't, you don't have to sharpen it. It's just retractable so it twists up. This is $5 on Amazon. Four of these are long lasting, they wear great. This is like the perfect everyday kind of lip liner for me. My lips have some natural pigment to them and I would say this is like, slightly darker to where it doesn't look weird if I don't fill them in like most often I don't I usually use it as just like overlining on the top and bottom fill it in a tiny bit just like blend it and then I put on some kind of gloss it's gonna look different depending on your skin tone this is my favorite clear gloss I have found to date it is super comfortable it's not sticky at all it gives you this beautiful sheen and like smooths out your lip lines a little bit gives you a nice like plump look but it's very comfortable it doesn't feel sticky when you first smell it, it has like a berry scent, which I'm not super into, but as soon as I put it on my lips, I don't smell it at all. It's not one that like I can taste or anything like that. I love the other shades of this as well. There's like a berry one and then a nude one. The nude one is so pretty. I really love the more like natural looking lips this last year where it's just a liner and then a gloss, no lipstick really. By the way, I don't have my rings on right now, I just realized. Uh, they're in the car. I've been doing a pottery class and every time I have to take off all my jewelry, so my rings are all in the car right now. This is under $5 and it's actually supposed to be a blush, but I like using it as a blush topper slash like pink highlighter. Wet n Wild Peach Bums, you guys. If you're into the glowy, pinky kind of cheeks, you need to get this. It gives you such a pretty sheen, and especially if you put like this or the next one underneath and then put that over top just on the high points. So beautiful. I like to just take my finger and tap it on, but like I said, I don't think it's like pigmented enough to be an Oliver blush, which is what it's supposed to be. So the Essence Highlighter Palette, this is $9. I swear, if you put this in MAC packaging, you would not be able to tell the difference between a MAC blush and this. It has the same kind of like look and feel to me and pigmentation. It lasts amazing. If you have issues with powder blush coming off your face, try this palette. This was like one of those things where I just kind of purchased because I was doing a under $10 video. These kind of palettes, some of them can just be kind of like cheapy. That's what I was kind of picturing this to be. The highlighter, the pink shade, I love using too. It's super pretty. And the three blushes at the bottom, I can use individually or I just like mix them all together kind of and apply to my face. I discovered one foundation this year that I feel like is gonna be one of those foundations that I will forever repurchase and use. It's just one of, it's one of those. It's in the holy grail category at this point. The House Labs foundation, the shade 230 is like my perfect tanner shade. I don't have it with me right now. It is a very heavy glass bottle, that's the only thing. So if you're traveling like it's a big guy, it feels like a paperweight. I talked all about this in one of my foundation roundup videos from the year. To me, this is a velvety feeling foundation. Like the texture of it is very velvety blending out, super easy to blend. It gives you this beautiful satin finish, but it is one of those foundations that really can alter, the finish can change depending on what you have underneath and over top. So you can make it look really glowy, you can make it look more matte, I love a foundation like that because it makes it more versatile depending on what you're going for. I like it with brush or sponge. I'll have my go-to foundation brush and sponge link down below. Either one works great with this foundation. It is full coverage. It is long lasting. I wore this at a wedding. Looks good through sweating, working out in like heat, but it does have high coverage and unless you're mixing it, you probably won't really get it to sheer out very much. So I would say only get this if you like medium to full coverage. And my skin type has been pretty on the normal side, not super dry, not oily. One foundation that I was deciding if I should include or not because it's technically discontinued, but you can still buy it. You can still buy it on Amazon in a lot of the shades. So I feel like until you can't buy it anymore, I'm gonna mention it because it is that good. The NYX Born to Glow Foundation. This looks like skin, it gives you the most beautiful radiant finish, but it also has this like really unique quality to it where it's a little bit softening. That's really hard to find in glowy radiant foundations and I can't explain it, but it looks better on my skin 
throughout the day. Just really melts in with your skin. Looks stunning and is long lasting and the coverage you can alter. I would say it's medium coverage, but you can get pretty decent coverage out of this depending on how you apply it. If you are a bride and you're looking for a foundation that just has that like natural glow and that isn't total full coverage, like you still want your skin to look like skin, get this. It's about $10, but it's been going on sale on Amazon for like $7. Like I said, not every shade is available anymore, but you could always buy two and like mix and match since it is on the affordable side. Actually, it's very affordable now for a foundation. I remember when like all drugstore foundations were $7. Now they're like 15, 20. My most used concealer, definitely since this came out, which was like the last half of the year, is the Natasha Denona concealer. I use the shade N3, which I really like the tone of. This is beautiful on your face as well, which is really, I feel like what puts it in the favorites category for me because I can get a lot of different use out of it. It looks great under my eyes, but it also looks really good as spot concealer or sometimes if I have like a lot of redness from my hot pack, I'll put it on on top of my foundation or just on top of my SPF without any foundation. And it looks like a foundation, it looks like a full coverage foundation, doesn't look cakey or anything, blends out really well with like a foundation brush. I do like to let most of my concealers sit on for about, I don't know, anywhere from like 20 to 40 seconds before blending it out. And I definitely like to do that with this. This has a matte finish, but it's like a nice creamy matte, doesn't feel super drying. I still don't know how to freaking say this brand, I should figure this out. I think it's Give, the Give Beauty, Gwen Stefani's brand. This highlighter in the shade specifically, Homegrown Glow, is stunning. If you like that glow from within, very natural kind of look, this is beautiful. It has a little bit of a peachy undertone, but I would say just overall warmth. It almost reminds me of like a MAC soft and gentle, like that kind of look. Beautiful over textured skin, doesn't cling to texture, doesn't look like super shimmery, just gives you this very beautiful glow from within kind of look. If you're hearing like a waterbed sound, I have my hot pack on my lap because I can't turn on the heat because of the microphone and it's a wee bit chilly in here. This is definitely my most used eyeshadow palette of the year, the Wet n Wild Always Naked palette. It's drugstore palette, it's around 10 bucks. So there's a couple shades in here that I don't use at all, like glitter, it's just like a dry, like loosey kind of glitter. I wish they took that one out and put a black and then this palette would be perfection. I just think it's a good, easy, everyday, throw something in the crease, throw something in the lid. You just want basic, affordable eyeshadow. I also love the white like shimmery shade for the inner corner. It gives your inner corner such a nice pop. And when I was looking through like the footage for this video, there were a few times where I was looking at my eyeshadow thinking it was the Dior palette that I was wearing. And then I would check the description box and I was wearing this palette. This palette is definitely what I used the most this year. These Kiss individual lashes. So these are the ones that you just press on. You don't put any glue or anything. You just press on underneath your lash. After applying mascara, I like to do it when my mascara is still a little wet because I feel like then when I clamp it together, it really adheres well. These were such a game changer for me because it's so nice for just every day if you want a little bit of lift in your outer corner, want a little bit more shape, but you don't wanna look like you're wearing false lashes, like they look natural enough to where it can pass and also they're very light. These feel so nice and light. There is a learning curve with these. I feel like people either love or hate these and I think the difference is just if you can get them to stick. Like I said, do the mascara thing. When I do that, I have no issues with them sticking and they stay on all day. Never have had one like pop off or fall off. Now I can't live without these. The NARS Laguna Cream Bronzer in the shade one. The shade, the tone of this is perfect. It has this nice sandy kind of undertone. It's not too orange. It's not too cool tone to where it's like a contour, beautiful, beautiful tone. But the formula of this bronzer is like butter. It is so smooth and creamy, but in a way that doesn't, it's like, it's not slipping around after you put it on. But if you're someone who's like, okay, how good can a cream bronzer be? Try the NARS one. Tarte Lip Liner in Mauve. This was another lip liner that I used the majority of the year. It doesn't look very mauve to me. It's more of like a pinkish. Again, another one that looks so beautiful with any kind of pinky gloss, like this with Fenty Sweet Mouth. So pretty. It wears well, it's creamy, it's retractable, so it twists up again. Love the tone, love the formula. CoverGirl Yummy Gloss in the shade, but first a Cosmo. This is another product that I wore for months and months and months on end and was addicted to. The shade is beautiful. It's very like springy summery to me. Like I'm not wearing this as much in the winter right now. It's moisturizing. It's a very like comfortable lip oil kind of feel. It has the prettiest 
sheer pink tone where you can still see your lips coming through underneath. Gives you that like glassy kind of lip look. Love using that with the Tarte Mauve Liner. Huda Beauty Cream Blush in Coral Cutie. I probably never would have ordered this online. I don't know why, but I found this because I was in the Sephora store and I was just like swatching a bunch of different cheek products and this looked stunning when I swatched it on my hand. It is stunning. Similar to the Wet n Wild that I mentioned at the beginning, it gives you such a pretty sheen. It gives you this very reflective, summery kind of cheek. Great over texture. I use this either as an all over like super glowy blush or as a blush topper. You can use it in either way. House Labs Rose Quartz Highlighter. It looks like it's gonna be super intense, ridiculously shimmery in the pan. It has this super beautiful pink tone to it. More pink than any of the other products I've mentioned today. It gives you that ethereal kind of look, like almost pinky, angelic. Again, looks good over texture. A lot of highlighters can just really cling to texture and like emphasize your cheeks right here. Do I even have, I don't even have a highlighter on today. <laughs> if you need a good drugstore brow pencil, I think I repurchased this probably three or four times this year. This is the Joa brow pencil. The shade Brunette is my favorite. This is retractable. It has a nice tiny tip and it's the perfect amount of waxy to me. I don't like a super creamy brow pencil because I feel like I don't have enough control. It's not like hard to blend out or anything, but you're you're not sliding all over the place. It has a spoolie on the other end so you can flick up and brush through afterwards. This I discovered the last few months of the year, I wanna say. Talk about an underrated setting spray. This is a Korean product, uh, underrated in the US. I'm not sure if it's really popular in Korea, it probably is. I think this is one of the most long lasting setting sprays. Like I would compare this to one size. It also has the nice, super fine, mist so you're not going to get splotches on your face or like the water droplets if i know i'm going to be having a long day where i need my makeup to really stay on i'll use this underneath and i feel like that does an incredible job of like locking it in if you really want to stay use it under and over the other thing i really love is that this doesn't alter the finish of your foundation sometimes you just get you know the right combo between your moisturizer primer and foundation where you don't want to add any other glow you just want to keep it as is but you still want to set your face that's when this guy is perfect because a lot of setting sprays will have kind of a glow, which I do like, especially if I'm using like more of a matte foundation, I wanna add that glow back in, make it look more skin-like. There's definitely like a time and a place for those kind of setting sprays, but I feel like majority of the time, I don't wanna super alter the finish. This is perfect for that. I have a few other in the beauty category, but that aren't makeup. The Garnier Apple line, the shampoo and conditioner. I found this like really on a whim. I was in, I think the grocery store in like Arizona and I needed a new shampoo and conditioner. This was on sale. I am so happy I discovered these this year. I know a lot of you ended up getting them and have messaged me saying you love them too. This is now my favorite, not just drugstore shampoo and conditioner, but all around shampoo and conditioner. My hair is very healthy and I've been doing stuff to it. Both hairdressers I've gone to have said how healthy my hair is. This makes my hair smooth. I do feel like it helps to control the frizz a little bit and it adds shine for sure. It does a really good job of detangling. I always put my conditioner, let it sit on for like a few minutes in the shower. Then I brush through in the shower. It's not like tangling or anything. It does a really good job of detangling. And then, you know, do the rest of my styling. But I just swear by the shampoo and conditioner. I actually really like the scent. I'm usually not into fruity scents, but I really like the scent of this one. I do sometimes like apple, so it makes sense. The Sol de Janeiro Rio Radiance perfume is the standout fragrance for me of the year because I just don't have anything else that smells like it and I don't think I've ever smelled anything like it. I really truly don't know how to explain the scent of this other than it smells like you but better. I don't know. You know how the Sol de Janeiro in general, there's just something different to their fragrances where they're like very addicting smelling. This has that but in a way that's like very nostalgic and very summery as well. They better not ever discontinue this. I have the body lotion and the fragrance mist. It's so good. The Skin Fix Cleanser. This cleanser, I actually just ran out of about a week ago. I purchased a different cleanser to try, like I think it was the Meaningful Beauty one. I just, I can't, I gotta go back. This one is now forever staying in the, the skincare rotation. It's interesting because I remember when I first tried this, I thought it felt like really slimy and like slippery and it definitely is, but to the point where now when I try other cleansers, I just feel like they're so drying. This cleanser feels moisturizing. You only need a little bit. I don't even know the, the adjective for this. It's not slimy, it's not oily, but it's like just very slick. 
so it spreads really well and it moisturizes your skin really well i don't use this as a makeup remover like i'm still i go in with the cleansing balm is one of those high-end products for me that is worth it last favorite of the year is the self tanner I'm wearing it right now. It is the Tan Lux Express Hydrating Self Tan Water. I'm normally not into tanning waters. I normally like a color guard because I like seeing where I'm applying it. So I was surprised when I first tried this. I usually spray it directly on the mitt. I do think the mitt absorbs some, so if you wanted, you could spray it directly on your body. I've never had it look streaky, like on my legs, on my chest, anywhere. It just doesn't streak, which is wild because you can't see where you're putting it on. So I'm just kind of like, I just quickly go like this. It does dry fast, so you want to work in sections, but it's not drying. My skin never feels dry with this product. It lasts well on me, and when it wears off, it doesn't get like super crusty, snaky looking. My hands right now, I got too much on. I would apply lotion first on your hands and then just like quickly rub over with a mint or use a little brush. I didn't do that this time. So my hands are looking a little too dark. It smells really good because it's clear and it's fast drying, doesn't get on your sheets because there's no color guard. They say as little as 30 minutes. <laughs> There's no way. I would not um, leave this on for 30 minutes. You're not gonna see anything. I don't think it's really like an express tanner. Personally, I like leaving this on overnight. I just like sleeping in my tanners because it's easy, especially if it's one that dries really quick. You can get dressed literally a couple minutes later. I would say leave it on for like at least four hours. The longer you leave it on, the deeper it is gonna develop. It's just no fuss. It's easy, it dries quick, it smells good, doesn't streak, lasts well. It just has like all the things I look for in a tanner. I can do two layers and it still is a nice color. It just looks very natural and pretty. Thank you for watching. I dedicate this video to the snow blowers of the world. But again, you can check out Thrive Market if you want 30% off your first order and a free gift up to $60 at the link down below. It's thrivemarket.com slash taylorwin. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.